literally under the seat, they just had the old tag and threw it in there. This is almost like a $50,000 tag. He flew this across the United States? Yep. It. Just to bring it here? Yep. For today's episode of Born Fine Hunter, we're at the Owl's Head Museum in Owl's Head, Maine. This is a, a transportation museum. So there's planes and automobiles and motorcycles and trucks and fire engines and popcorn wagons. There's a restoration shop, cars on display, an archive. And from the past when we've done museums, you have responded really positively about going into the back rooms of museums that is closed to the public. We did that at the Lane Museum in uh, Nashville. We did it at the Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan. And we're gonna do it today at the Owl's Head Museum in Owl's Head, Maine. This is one of my favorite car museums. And my friend, uh, Toby Stinson, has been with the museum now for how long? Uh, I've been working here officially 10 years and been coming since I was, I don't know, four years old to five, grew up down in Tennis Harbor, so. We're in the workshop area of the Owl's Head Museum. Toby just told me an interesting story that this Healy is part of. Tell us about how you got the phone call and the cars involved and whatever. Yeah, one of our, uh, our original fundraisers that we have is the consignment auction we have every year. Uh, and I get calls a lot of time from people, mom and dad passed away, what do we do? This car essentially was mom and dad passed away and we didn't even know it. They left it in their will and a long time ago they wrote, you know, they're coming to Owl's Head. So we go up to Lincolnville, down this dirt road in the wintertime, this barn, and there were six cars in there. And uh, four of them we sold, uh, an old Carmen Ghia, and, and to use money to help with other projects. There were two we're keeping. One is an original Ford, um, Willys GPW, World War II Jeep. And then we start digging and we find this Austin Healey, you know, 100. Uh, but then the more we start digging into it, and it's in a barn, um, I start finding little snippets that tell me, I got to get into this a little more and come to find out it's an Austin Healey Le Mans, but it's actually one of the 600 documented uh, ones that were built at the factory. Uh, and then we started going through a lot of different um, uh, triggers to try to verify that that is actually what happened. Uh, it was funny, uh, the car was well restored in the 80s. Uh, when we found it, the cylinder head was off, the oil pan was off. Uh, the valves, it was a classic barn story find. The valves are over here, the carbs are over here. The cylinder head was in the summer kitchen of the farmhouse on the workbench, and he basically almost passed away. And what we figured is he was trying to put new rings in it for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, so we got the car here, and we've been slowly, Tuesdays and Thursdays, of volunteers. Um, uh, now we've got it, we had the cylinder head replaned. Uh, we had to have new valve, we rebuilt the entire cylinder head. Uh, we found in boxes all the bits and pieces that are correct to the 100 M Le Mans that he had collected. So we're making sure that we put the right distributor because it has a little bit farther advance because it's supposed to run at a higher RPM. Um, we're putting a correct fuel pump back in, change the gas tank, doing the brakes. Uh, and um, you know, you can build a new restorer tag very easily. Okay, oh, yeah. and when you're looking at the Le Mans, you know, they have, um, uh, in, the only way you know it's a factory built 600 is you have to contact the Brit British Motor History Heritage Trust. There's an acronym for you. And they'll tell you the numbers line up. Well, the engine number you can see by the, the, um, the rivets hasn't been taken off, mm -hmm. um, but this is a replacement tab. So when I was in the barn, with the, the sun and trying to figure this out, I was pawing through everything because old people never throw anything away. And I actually found, literally under the seat, they just had the old tag and threw it in there. But in the high-end collector car world, if this is one of the 600, this is almost like a $50,000 tag because it's the only original piece that validates that this really is the original so number. So is it, what year is 54? Uh, 56, I believe. 56, so this is one of the 600 models of the car that raced in Le Mans. Yeah, well they, they mm -hmm. raced the car at Le Mans mm -hmm. and then they produced a, a, a kit so you could have the same version. Got and it. At, most, like most things in the 50s and 60s, right, they're dealer installed, you can buy and do your own. But 600 of them were done at the factory mm -hmm. and those are the valuable ones. And this is um, the original one. I pulled uh, the trim metal off because the number, uh, they asked me for the numbers on the back of the trim 
to match that number uh, and also the number on the um, on the key tumbler had to match if you look at the certificate it says wow. this body number this engine number this sequence number and they said that's the key tumbler number Isn't that and it all lined up so I mean so this, have you done anything cosmetically to it yet or you just cleaned it we, 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 we blew the barn dust off it and kind of like wiped it down uh, we've mostly really been focusing on all mechanicals and the and the guys and the girls here in, in the Tuesday Thursday Thursday nights fantastic they've got it running really really well but the gas tank was yeah. junk so we've got a new gas tank we've got a new fuel pump on order um, and now Dennis and, um, and and the crew uh, and George are going through and now it's all brakes wheel cylinders master cylinders things like that is this a keeper for the museum yes for the foreseeable future we, we this is a keeper a lot of people want to support Alice has legacy and be a part of it well this is a great example they left us six cars we kept two because the World War II Jeep is important to keep to tell that story. And you can't really bookend the Model T without the Jeep because the production process, World War II, that's the Jeep that changed the world. This is a rare sports collector car document. We keep this one. The old MGTD, the old burned out Carmen Ghia, and the other Austin Healey that we were able to get running, you know, we sold those. Mm -hmm. But that money, you'll walk into the aircraft side and you'll see these aircraft are getting worked on because we had a good year with donating. Ah. So we try, like a car has value, and so we try to exercise the value to benefit the museum as a whole. We also, if you hear earlier, you saw a bunch of school programs. We've got two extra educators that are working here because we have such high demand for our school and STEM activities. Well, the money comes from, you know, you give me, you give us five or six cars, five Model Ts funds X number of school trips. Right. So that's kind of, most people think we want the car to be in the museum. We want to, and maybe it will be, because I'll take your Packard, no problem, and we'll have it looking great. But how can we turn this value into value that continues our legacy? So cool. it's 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 like a constant fantasy football trading lineup. It's, you have to make those decisions. But so can you show us the Jeep that was the other keeper? Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, good. absolutely. <clears throat> All right. So what year is this? Tell us about this Jeep. Yeah, this is a um, this is a 1942 Ford GPW, uh, and the reason I say Ford. Uh, is because um, uh, during World War II, the U.S. government bought, you know, they paid to have the contracts and designs made. Willys had the design. Ford produced the majority of these uh, in World War II. This was in the collection we mentioned in the barn. Uh, when we found them, they probably hadn't sat since Dad passed away first, seven, eight years. Uh, we cleaned the carbs and the gas out of it, and um, this thing started right up. Uh, we re actually, we, re we have this one on our registered to drive list, uh, probably doing the 4th of July parade. Uh, we had a little auto tour a couple weeks ago. This thing did all 80 miles. You know, it's the, it's the Jeep. It's the so car did you have to do world. anything to it cosmetically? Was, was all this on there? This is how she looked. Wow. Yep, this is how it looked. You just washed it. Yeah, or blew the dust off it. And yep. I mean, this might. We, we did was... actually. We did one thing mechanically. Uh, the second or third time we drove it, the shifting fork in there bound up. So we got a new shifting fork, pulled the cover, and, and got that working again pretty easily. So I mean, this could be original. These seats. Uh, I believe. I, I believe the vehicle at one point has been restored. Okay. Um, but this is original type material. You feel that kind of like that, mm -hmm. that tackiness. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that that the oil soaked right, you know cloth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we, for right now, this is kind of our kind of little military area. Um, a lot of our early vintage aircraft are First World War centric because that's when aviation really kind of took off. Uh, and we also have uh, those two crosses up there. Those are actual crosses cut out of a downed German fighter plane by Sumner Sewell, who was an ace and former governor of the state of Maine. And he shot the plane down. And in World War I, you had to go confirm your kill personally. For, for like 50 years, those hung over the bar at the Monswick Roadhouse. On how we and want. then we preserve them and put them here. So one thing I know our view to, viewers love is to see what people can't see. So you have a building nearby here that contains cars that are not on display. Could, could you get us in there? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's our brand new storage facility that we just opened. Probably cleaner than all absolutely. the other storage facilities we've been yeah. to. So yeah. good. I'd like that. This is that plane I was telling you about. This is a, a British uh, SE5. And the construction techniques is 100% original, authentic 1918. This is the first plane designed by the British to have inverted, inverted fuel tanks. Hopefully this is one of the projects that we pick up and turn back into a full flying replica. Now, these planes originally had uh, V8 Hispano Suiza engines. And we have an original 1918 V8 Hisso 
all rebuilt, dyno tested, ready to go in this plane, and it's gonna be 100% authentic, true Is it an recreation. aircraft engine or car engine? It didn't make any difference. Um, I, I think it's a, a, a aircraft, an engine adapted for aircraft. It has, it's not, a, it's not a air-cooled, it's a big water-cooled. So it has a big radiator in the front. Yeah, I'd say most of the uh, the storage buildings we go in are not this clean. So didn't didn't you guys inherit a bunch of MGs a number of years ago? Yes, we probably have. I'm not saying the, but we probably have one of the best MG collections in the United States, uh, and we're kind of a mecca for the MG nuts. Uh, a couple years ago, we sold a uh, custom built early MG uh, for like two hundred twenty thousand in the auto auction. Remember that one? So Dick and Dottie Cobb of Gardner, Maine. Uh, again, we talked about the Legacy Program. Uh, they passed, um, she passed away first, and then uh, Dick donated his entire MG collection to the Owl's Head around 2010. There was 30 some odd MGs. Oh. Um, and what we started to do is, um, once he finally passed away and the estate was all settled, uh, we went through a selective process, had a committee, and we went through and said, look, we, we don't need 30 MGs. But what we did was we kept what we felt was the most significant example of that year. And this is one of the earlier ones uh, MG Midget, 1930, uh, and amazing. there's another early one in the auto shop which we're bringing back to life. We so do more will that work. You, in the will you above. restore this, or will you just preserve it and keep it as is? We'll probably keep it as is. Yeah, um, but the whole direction of the yeah. industry, as I don't have to tell you, is preservation. Preservation. Yeah. It, but one thing we do is it's it's like sailing. You know, let the wind lead the lady as you go down the water is you start with the car and you do your first checks. You know, is the engine stuck? If it is, why isn't it? Uh, is it free? What's its compression? Uh, can we get spark? Oh, we got spark. And, and if you're here on Thursday nights, the volunteer crew, it's, it's like, oh, we can, it's like it's alive again. And then you kind of go through <laughs> and then you say, if you're going to restore it in a museum setting, you've got to do it right. Okay, mm -hmm. this is how it came out of Dick and Dottie's warehouse, and it's like it's like it's like Tom. Where do you start? Where do you stop? When they have MG Day at Greenwich sometime, I'm sure they'll appreciate this just as much unrestored right, like this right. um, as is. But you look at the leather. I mean, look. I mean, you can tell this is the original leather. I can't believe this, this little car has got you know? a back seat. You know, this little yeah. car. I mean, in theory, this is a four seater. Four four seater and like well, yeah. well it is. So at some point she'll get her time to kind of go through. Uh, I, and like with the Austin Heal you're working on, you got to give our volunteers credit. They have become Cracker Jack, MG mechanics, and Austin right, Healy yeah. mechanics because yeah. all we've been working on for the last five or six years is about 30 MGs. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, I get you it. Know? So uh, another this one, another this, Jeep. Like, uh, how do you like that? Yeah, this is um, so. This is a good example of what I was talking about before. So this is an authentic. 1952 Korean War era M38. This actually was consigned to our fundraising auction a couple years ago, and a gentleman bought it. There's a matching authentic trailer right there, huh. and he bought it, and then unfortunately he got sick and passed away. Wife downsized, moved to Florida, and she called us up and said, you know, he's gone. Uh, would you guys want the Jeep to the museum? And so we took it as a donation, and we kept it. Then one day we got a call. Now we have the World War II Jeep, and so what we've decided to do is this one is probably going to be moved on from because now we have the 42. So, this will be so we, in the we, made, we made a historical interpretation of if you can't keep one Jeep yep. to represent yep. it, yep. Yep. then yep. keep the, the one that changed the world. So that's the decision we're making. And but so this will go to auction? This will go to the, this will be New England Auto Auction in August. So when is your auction? August 25th and 26th mm -hmm. this year. Preview opens the 23rd, uh, and their majority of them are all consignments. Uh, but we get somebody's vehicle, like this MG over here. This is one that came out of the um, the estate last year. Uh, it would have gone last year, but we had an incident before the auction. So, um, short version is she she caught fire. Oh. <laughs> well, this is well because the carburetor's dripped, and the starter we got it to run, but the starter was old and it arced. At the same time, the car was dripping gas, and it flared up. I got and we, you know, two seconds we were done, but we said, you know what, we'll go through this winter and put it back. So, yep. uh, but but this is what's fun about you know carrying the hobby on. It runs and drives really really well. Mm -hmm. uh, it needs a little love, but you don't maybe have necessarily have to pay a full price. Yeah. But someone's going to get this. And yeah. I was sitting in that auction, you know, when I was eight years old, and my dad bought a Model A, and what did we do my whole life growing up? You know, this is, you know, we come to the owl set and get involved. So this is kind of, you know, mm -hmm. it's like reincarnation in some way. We're carrying it forward. No, so uh, this is this is our sweepstakes car this year. If you go online, I'll be in the lobby pretty soon. 69, 912. 
Uh, it's got a hairy pillow built industrial engine, so it's 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 got some some uh, some guts to it. And um, so this is online right now, and that's a sweepstakes um, that we're running throughout the season. And we'll so be you can buy tickets as a yeah, you can buy chances yeah. online, and we'll be giving this car away come August, uh, October actually. This was donated a year ago. Is that uh, an A400? This is an A400 convertible sedan. We're keeping this one. Uh, this is of the deluxe Model A's. Only second to the two-door Phaeton, and I, I just know because yeah, my yeah, father yeah. and I have one. This is the the rarest uh, Ford Model A body style, next mm -hmm. to the town sedan, but the mm -hmm. production one's Murray bodied uh, A400 um, uh, convertible sedan. Oh. And the aircraft behind you, the Millican Special, that plane is exactly untouched, even the sand, from its one and only flight. Bill Millican was a young kid from Old Town, Maine. Uh, he loved being an engineer, and when he was in high school and reading popular mechanics books and things, he built his own home-built aircraft and took it like everybody else. Old Orchard Beach was one of the flight testing areas of the country and racing at the same time. You know, before Ormond Beach it was Daytona, uh, and Daytona, it was Old Orchard. And um, the original prop we have that's broken, and he took off, and when he landed, the sand was soft, and he dug in and nosed over. Um, we've got a photo of him next to the plane, scratched his head with it upside down. What kind of motor is that? I don't know. It's a good question. So he yes. built that himself. He built that himself, his little guy. Uh, and actually, here's the thing, because you're an SCCA guy. Yeah. Who is the only living person to ever have a corner name for them at Lime Rock? Which corner? Corner. Millican Corner. Millican Corner. That's Bill Millican. That's this and guy. He's from Maine? I thought he was Old from New York. Old Town, Maine. Wow. Born and bred. And then he went on to be an engineer for Boeing, worked on the B-29. And so right. his origin is right here. So, so look at this plane. It's, got, it's a pusher, a pusher plane? Um, it was built to look like a British F, uh, FE-8, uh, which was a pusher plane, 1916 model. Um, it's, we've flown it five or six years ago, we were still flying it. It's failed really all of its safety tests. It needs to be okay. completely re-restored, which takes a lot of effort and money. But mm -hmm. this plane was built in the early 1980s in Washington state. And for the sole purpose of flying it across the country Holy to be man. donated to Al's head. And he just followed roads and would fly around at like five or 600 feet. And when he got a little, he would find he a farm field. across the United States? Yep. It, just to bring it here? Yep. And when he landed, he said, here's the keys. Man. Well, the, he was, what, yeah. Phew. Isn't that something? And you know, 36 Ford, probably a 53. Yeah, and this is, and we, this is our workhorse. You see all the stuff in the back, but when we do flight line, this is one of our flight line safety vehicles. We got the fire extinguishers and, they, and, the, and the yellow flashing light, and they're running up and down. Because uh, these planes, the tail draggers, you know, once they land, you know, sometimes we got to turn them around and pull them back. If you're a long time, viewer of Barn Find Hunter, you remember an episode that we were in California and we found one of these, and all, actually all of us, all the camera guys, I mean, fell in love with it. Uh, and I fell in love with it even more when I opened the hood and it was actually a Chevy engine. The other guy said, hey, I don't want it anymore. When, when sports cars were all the rage, guys come back from World War II, MGTC, TDs, TFs, Austin Healy's, Jaguars, whatever, Jeep, Duh, what do we do? Mm -hmm. So this was a Jeep sports car. This is the best they could do. They didn't have a big budget. And, and they, were, they were terrific. Is this a six cylinder or a four cylinder? Six cylinder, Willie's six Jeepster. Yep. So they came initially with four cylinders and uh, then they came with uh, six cylinders and, and now lots of them have 289s and LS Corvette drivetrains. Great vehicle, great vehicle, wow. Operating museum is not easy. Whether it's an art museum or sculpture museum or a history museum or a car museum. And so we got a little bit of a look into how this, uh, this museum, the Allison Museum in, in Maine, operates. Cars come in, they're donated. Sometimes those cars are restored and kept on display. Sometimes those cars are sold as is. It's a good thing for people to donate cars if they can't donate money to a museum, and it keeps them healthy. Toby has given us kind of a back scene tour of archives, the workshops, and told us a little bit about how a car museum functions how they're uh, they're capitalized so what what what's the parting shot you want to leave people with about um, this museum or some other museum uh, we feel that the best way to tell you know history in the, certain the last 120 years is through the stories of transportation uh, we are uh, a, a species that has been put on wheels and on wings and um, we try to keep that spirit alive here and come see us some summer at Owl's Head. Uh, and we will uh, run, drive, and fly the cars and planes. Cool. Well, you heard it right there. So if you're coming to Midcoast, Maine, visit this place. 
And if you're not coming here, visit a place that's close to you. Happy hunting.